Hey, New Life Church. Uh, my name is Bronson Duke. I'm one of the pastors down at our downtown Little Rock location, and I am excited to be getting in the Word with you this morning, this evening, this afternoon, whatever time you're watching this. <music> Pastor Neil, Papa Na, as some call him. Um, <clears throat> I don't know where that nickname came from, but I like it. Uh, he gave me a scripture to get into with y'all, and it's uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Um, but before we get into that, <clears throat> I'd like to look at some of the surrounding scriptures, the ones that precede this scripture, and the ones that precede this scripture, because, you know, w when these letters were written, uh, they weren't necessarily numbered. They weren't numbered then. That's something we came up with to kind of index them and to help us reference them more quickly. They were actually written as letters, so I, I believe for us to really get the truth out of these scriptures sometimes, we need to look at the surrounding Scriptures, you know, NLC Live has done a great job giving us a way to interpret and look at the Scripture. And there's five things we look for: is there a promise to claim? Is there a sin to avoid? Is there a command to obey? An application to make? Or something new about God? And I believe we can find all five of those things in there. But before we get to chapter or verse eight, I'd like to start with verse thirteen. Go with me to Philippians chapter four, verse thirteen. Uh, I'm in the New Living Translation, and here's what it says. It says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. You know, <clears throat> willing to bet this is one of those scriptures that you've heard before. Uh, you know, you've seen it on some eye black situations, right? Football players. Uh, like, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can bench press 450 pounds. You know, for me, if I'm honest, a long, for a long time, that was kind of my lens on that scripture. That's how I looked at it. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of redefine what God's strength is looks like for us. And so I want to start in verse 4. And I'm going to read through it. Here's what it says. It says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Is there a command to obey? Always be full of joy in the Lord. Is there a promise to claim? Remember the Lord is coming soon. Is there a sin to avoid? Let everyone see that you're considerate in all that you do. We could be inconsiderate, right? I think a lot of Christians have kind of taken on uh, that persona, being inconsiderate, picketing, doing all those things, but that was never the way that Jesus asks us to live. Y'all, here's what I know. Living with joy sometimes can be difficult. Why? Because life is difficult. So how do we maintain our joy? I think it gives us a direction here. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. I wonder for how many of us worry is what robs us of joy. How do we not worry? We bring things to the Lord in prayer. Why do we bring things to the Lord in prayer? Because prayer is effective. I believe it also reorients how we look at where we find our security and our strength. Prayer is just saying, hey God, I need help. You know, a lot of times when we realize we need help, we realize it doesn't all rely on us. And we can look at the faithfulness of God throughout our lives, throughout our friends' lives, throughout the Scripture. It's amazing what God can do. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done. You all, sometimes the biggest antidote to worry is thankfulness. You can be going through a hard season. Who knows we're going to go through hard seasons. You cannot define what season you're in, but you can define the experience of the season that you have. How can you do that? I believe it's through trusting God. It's through staying full of joy by praying and taking your needs to God. It says, then you'll experience God's peace. Y'all, every person who has ever walked the planet has been looking for one primary thing, and I believe that that's peace. I believe we find that peace through God, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Then verse 8, the one I was assigned. It says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what's honorable, what's pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me, everything you've heard and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. I wonder what situation you're going through right now. I wonder if you're going through a situation, and I'd be willing to bet a lot of you watching this are going through a season right now where you're struggling with contentment. You don't know what God's going to do, and you need God to show up. You need peace. Paul went through that, y'all. He was persecuted. There's all kind of things that happened to him. It says that he was beaten with rods. He got uh, the 40 lashes minus one a few times. The guy was shipwrecked, but look what he says. We're going to jump forward to verse 11. He says, not that I was ever in need, 
for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing. Another translation says, I know how to be brought low. Then it says, I know how to live with everything. Another translation says, I know how to abound. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you've done well to share with me in this present difficulty. Y'all, what does it look like for us to walk in the fullness of what God has for us, to walk in God's strength. I believe it's staying full of joy. I believe it's bringing our prayers and our petitions to God. I believe that it's controlling our thought life. Verse 8, y'all, everything starts in your thoughts. The way you think about your situation is the way you will experience your situation. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. Look at your present life. Look at the areas where you're struggling with joy, the places where you're worrying, the places where your thought life is out of control and bring that to God this morning and embrace his strength so that you can have contentment in whatever you're walking through. That is my prayer for you. Uh, that's our prayer for you as a church. Right now we're going into a season of life group launch. I wanna encourage you to find a life group, find a group of people to walk with who are gonna remind you of these things. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for our church. We thank you for all that you're doing. Pray for everybody who's listening to me. God, I pray towards these specific situations. God, that you would bring peace. God, you'd bring your strength. You'd bring them joy. You'd remind them to pray that they don't have to be in control because you are. And God, you'd help us control our thoughts. To think about what's pure, lovely, admirable, and worthy of praise. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen.